How great a scientist was Abdus Salam? This is a question of great importance to Pakistanis. On the one hand, there are those who want to praise him to the skies, and on the other, there are many who refuse to recognize him as a great scientist, and this is because of religious prejudice. Abdul Salam was an Ahmadi, and Ahmadis are not considered Muslims in Pakistan and are also the subject of intense religious persecution. In our school books, children do not hear of Abdul Salam. On the other hand, they learn about those people who are alleged scientific heroes, but of whom the world of science has never heard of. Let's look at the facts. Abdul Salam got the Nobel Prize in Physics, absolutely the highest award in that field, in 1979 for unifying two of nature's fundamental forces and so helped us understand the basic elements of matter and how basic particles interact with each other. This led to the discovery eventually of the Higgs boson for which another Nobel Prize was given in 2014. Apart from this, Salam pioneered work in renormalization theory. He helped construct a new way of looking at supersymmetric particles, and he predicted proton decay. Now, proton decay unfortunately has not been found in spite of many intense efforts, but People are still looking at it, and it's something that could be very important. At the European Nuclear Research Laboratory called CERN, there is a street that is named after Abdus Salam. He has also been honored in many countries. Salam also had a very inspiring personality, and this is why he was able to found the International Center for Theoretical Physics in Trieste, Italy. Today, it has grown into a huge institution where thousands of scientists from across the third world visit it. It has now been renamed as the Abdus Salam International Center for Theoretical Physics. Who can doubt that Abdus Salam was a great scientist? However, people tend to exaggerate. They want to make Abdus Salam appear even bigger than what he actually was. And so they invent things. For example, very recently there was an article that was published in a Pakistani newspaper which reads as follows. One day, when Professor Salam was studying in Princeton, New Jersey, he met Professor Einstein casually on the campus of the Institute for Advanced Study. Einstein asked him, what kind of research are you doing? Salam replied, I'm working on the renormalization theory. To which Einstein replied, I'm not interested in that. After a few moments of silence, Einstein asked the Pakistani, have you studied my relativity theory? Salam replied, I'm not interested in that. Now, <laughs> This is not only wrong, it's ridiculously wrong. Renormalization theory, on which Salam worked on as a student and for some time after that, is based 100% on Einstein's theory of relativity and every particle physicist knows that. Furthermore, Salam was never a student at Princeton University. Yes, he did visit it for a meeting and for a conference, and he might have encountered Einstein over there, but Salam would never have told the most famous scientist of his time, one whose work was fundamental to Salam's own work, that I'm not interested in what you're doing. That simply makes no sense. Of course, Salam was a very great scientist and the salam weinberg glashow model, as it once used to be called, is now called the standard model of particle physics. It's called that because it tells us how the most basic particles in the world interact with each other. And so we get 
an insight into the deepest mysteries of nature itself. The standard model has been tested again and again, thousands of times in experiments across the world, and no error has been found to date. This is why the work of Salam and Weinberg especially was of the greatest importance to 20th century physics. There were people who wanted to stop Salam from getting the Nobel Prize. They did not have a religious problem with him, but they did have personal and professional problems perhaps, but they couldn't succeed because that work was so excellent. Having said all this, let's now be realistic. Abdus Salam was a great scientist, but you cannot elevate him to the level of Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein, or even physicists like Richard Feynman or Paul Dirac. Their contributions were at a far more fundamental level. Salam would certainly have agreed to this. He would never have tried to claim that he was at the level of Newton or Einstein or Feynman or Dirac. In conclusion, I think we Pakistanis have even more reason to be proud of Abdus Salam. He came from very humble origins. He was born in a small town, Jhang, which was perfectly ordinary. The school he went to didn't even have chairs. They would sit on the floor. The first time Salam saw an electric light was when he went to Lahore at the age of 14 and yet rose to become one of the finest physicists in the world. I'm sure that uh, what I've said here may have offended some of his admirers as well as those who don't like him. But science is about objectivity and so it is necessary. It is incumbent upon us to be objective about scientists as well.